super excited to show you guys how I made this sweet pendant light. No wire showing at all. It's actually a really easy DIY build and you can do it for under a hundred bucks. So let's dive in. So the main things we need for this light are aluminum C-channel, you can get it at any big box store, some threaded lamp tube to hang the light with, of course, some LED strips, and a sheet of some white acrylic. First up, we're gonna be cutting four pieces of this aluminum C-channel, which are gonna form the rectangular shape of the pendant light. We're gonna to need to do 45 degree miter cuts for these. You could actually just use a miter handsaw guide that costs like 15 bucks. It takes a little bit of time. And you can cut this aluminum using really anything you could use to cut wood. But to speed things up, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my miter saw to trim these on down. Now for the exciting part, we get to weld or braze aluminum. And this is something that I've never really done before. All it takes is like a $50 torch and these little brazing rods of aluminum. Now I was actually a little intimidated, but once I started doing it, then the little test piece I found out it's fairly simple to do. You can do it! When you get the aluminum channel from the big box store, there's gonna be a lot of gunk all over it, mill scale and that sort of thing. So you need to clean that off, and the best way to do that is with a steel wire brush. You just hit all the edges until you see it start to shine, and then you're ready for the next step, which is hitting the edges with a file, and you're just creating a little bevel. Then when you put the two pieces together to form a joint, the divots form a little valley, so that when you melt the rod into that valley, you get a lot of material and form a nice strong joint. Next up is brazing. And the trickiest part about this is probably just figuring out how to clamp the pieces down while you're brazing. Obviously you're shooting a flame at the metal. I didn't want to do it against wood. So I just got creative and threw down a scrap piece of steel plate and lit that sucker up. Now when you're doing this, you gotta have a little patience. It takes about a minute or so for the aluminum channel to get up to the right heat. And you're not actually melting the rod. You're just heating the aluminum up then touching the rod to it. And since the rod melts at a lower temperature than the aluminum, the heat from the aluminum itself will melt the rod onto it. I'll do two sides, put them aside, and I'm gonna do the other two sides, put them together in a corner, and then I'll put those two halves of the rectangle together last. So while we're waiting for that to cool off, I'm gonna address a question that I am sure many of you are gonna have. Just how strong exactly are the welds with this? So this is a sample piece. I've just uh, did it the same way I did these. I painted it, spoiler alert, this is I think what the final piece is gonna look like. Let's just try to wishbone this thing. <clears throat> All right, Ugh, yep, that's about as hard as this gimp can pull and then push it the other way in. All right, I'm gonna say that I am not able to by hand break that. I've actually seen people do like coffee table bases with square tubes welded like this. And, and certainly for a light fixture that's gonna be just hanging from the ceiling and not bearing any weight, these are gonna be plenty strong. So, all right, can't break it. Gosh, dang it. After welding the top seams, I flipped it up on its side to get a better angle to weld the inside corner seams. Since this was my first time, not all the joints were pretty, but it was really easy to clean them up with a sander. Then I used some mineral spirits to get the whole thing nice and clean before spraying a coat of primer on it. And I put the primer on now because we're gonna be gluing things to it in a later step and the primer will help glue stick to the fixture. So before we put the final coat of paint on and put the LEDs in, we gotta make the LED diffuser out of acrylic. We're just gonna cut down some strips of acrylic on the table saw that we're gonna make the diffuser from. First, you can see there are these little strips that I've super glued to the side here on my little test piece. And these strips are gonna serve as a ledge to rest the diffuser piece on top of. 
so it stays at the right height. For the future piece, I'm gonna cut at the table saw and sneak up on, gradually making it thinner until it is a nice, tight, pressure fit. Once I had the pressure fit width dialed in, I repeated the process to cut down strips for the entire fixture. Before using CA glue to attach the support strips to the inside of the fixture, I gave them a light sanding. And this is just so the CA glue will adhere better to the smooth acrylic. Before we go further, a quick message from this video's amazing sponsor, Simply Safe. It has officially been over two years since I started working with Simply Safe and have been relying on them to protect my biggest investment, which is this building. As y'all know, I recently finished the kitchen build out, so of course I added a new Simply Safe motion sensing camera to the kitchen. I basically got the entire building blanketed in Simply Safe cameras so I can always pull up the Simply Safe app and check out what's going on here. I love the peace of mind that Simply Safe gives me, and recently, when I had my unexpected stay in the hospital, that was very important. Since the aneurysm ruptured while I was on what was supposed to be a four-day trip and then turned into a two-week trip because of my hospital stay, there was a long period of time where I wasn't here to check on the building. But fortunately, I could pull up my phone, pop open the Simply Safe app, and see that everything was in order at the building, and of course I knew that if anything did happen, Simply Safe would call the police immediately so they could go take care of it, even when I wasn't there. Right now, Simply Safe has a great deal going for my subscribers. Just head to simplysafe.com slash medustrial and you'll get 20% off your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan. Plus, you'll get one month of the plan for free. So check out Simply Safe for yourself. I think you'll like it as much as I do. Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video and supporting this community, and now, Let's get back into it. So it's time to think about how we are gonna hang this thing above the island. And the plan is to use these threaded lamp rods. These are just like typical threaded rods, except that they are hollow. They kind of have a cool industrial feel that's modern and minimalist. And keeping with the minimalist design, I like to only use two of these. And that's gonna mean that we have to find the center point of the weight distribution so that this thing balances because you can see I've got these things here. They get a little off center. The thing tilts and that would result in a crooked fixture. What I'm going to try to do is use these little bench cookies to try to find the point where it's evenly distributed. You know, you'd assume it was the exact center, but we've added the acrylic inside so it may not be exactly the center that's the... And that looks pretty good, so we're going to mark the spots where they are and drill some holes there for the threaded lamp rod. Now we have yet another decision to be made that is a little trickier because of the fact we're trying to keep this such a minimal design. And that is how do I attach the threaded lamp pipe to the actual fixture? So we got two options and I tested both options on this little scrap piece here. Option one, drill a hole that is larger than the lamp pipe. You put it through and then on the inside, use a little nut, screw it on to the lamp pipe inside of the fixture and that would secure it. Option number two, I've got this tapping kit that I can basically add threads to the hole through the fixture. So with that option, the lamp pipe screws directly onto the fixture and then I'll throw a nut on top just to hold it in place and lock it there. I think either of these would work. Using the nut is definitely a little bit simpler. You don't have to have the tap and die kit, although this is a cheap $40 kit from Amazon. I'm gonna go with the threaded hole using the tapping kit. And the reason I think that is better is because I can basically make the bottom of the rod flush with the inside of the fixture here. And that way there won't be a big bump in the LEDs going over the spot where you've got a nut inside of the channel. I'm 
trying to figure out now. I don't think I'm really compensating and it looks pretty darn level. I mean, I think this is gonna work. Adding the LEDs and the diffuser, the weight of those should be very evenly distributed so it should stay balanced. And yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic that this is all we're gonna need and that's gonna look really simple and elegant. We gotta trim the LED strip to length. Unfortunately, it's got these handy little marks on the strip that show you exactly where you can cut without messing up the connection. And by the way, I'm using a different type of LED strip. This is called a COB, which stands for chip on board. LED strip, it's got a continuous light. So you don't get that dotty effect that a lot of LED strips give. We get that continuous streak of light that looks just so darn sexy. I'll throw a link in the description if you're interested. They are kind of new. I hadn't seen them until maybe like six months ago I discovered these. Next it was time to solder the LED power wires to the LED strip. Now the power wires will go through those threaded rods later, but for now I just threaded them through the hole and around the LED strip so I could solder them to the connectors on the strip itself. After we got the first connection solder as a sanity check just to make sure it's all working correctly. So got a 24 volt power supply that I just used to test and a simple like $3 LED controller that's rated for 24 volts. This plugs into your wall outlet, has a little jack that plugs in there and it looks great and it's gonna be bright. Woo. With the successful test of the first segment, all that was left to do was wire up the LED strips on the other three sides. And for this, I just cut little pieces of the LED wire to wrap around the corners, solder those onto the connectors on the strip, and then hope and pray that I didn't screw something up during that process and that the full light will actually work. Okay, moment of truth. Success, all right. I don't know how well you can tell on film, but yeah, it is. It is bright. I think this is a good stopping point. Good success for the night. I'm gonna go get some sleep and we'll come back and finish this thing off in the morning. All that's left to do now is just uh, put all the parts together. That is so satisfying when it, when that pops in like that. Fit at the corners came out pretty good. I'm not sure if you can see this on film, but like this and this are different colors. This is like white and this is yellower here. I wonder if I do need to inject some more power. Hmm. I'm an idiot and I'm glad that there is a very easy solution. Just stick one of the pieces off where there's a weird color. That is the reason why. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's gonna be super cool. Now it's time for the simple trick of threading the LED wire through the threaded lamp pipe. This is something I don't think I've seen anyone else do before. I had to kind of track down lamp pipe that was actually three feet long. It was kind of hard to find, but I'll leave a link if anyone else is interested in it. But this is really what makes it all come together because it just allows the fixture to float without wires getting in the way of it. And I used a little bit of thread locker on the nuts at the top just to lock it in and make sure that the threaded rod was secure. I used an aluminum flat bar to make the last component of the light, a mounting plate, which I'll attach to the ceiling and connect the threaded rods to. I was originally planning to screw the aluminum flat bar right into the joist in my timber ceiling, but I realized I had to lower the bar a bit to get around an HVAC duct. Fortunately, blocks of two by fours blend in perfectly with my timber ceiling, so this was really easy to do. Bright and early on a Monday morning, the electrician just got here, got a little bed head going, and uh, we're gonna go hang this pendant light up and I'm uh, pretty excited to see how it's gonna 
look when we fire it up over the island. We got one nut on each of these threaded rods and this is gonna be used on the underside of the flat bar to set the height of each rod. Then we're gonna drop on a lock washer and a second nut and those are gonna go on top of the flat bar to lock in the fixture. So I absolutely love how this came out, but I know the question that you guys are wondering is, did I make that $100 budget? For materials, I had two eight foot aluminum C channels. Those are 26 bucks in total. The COB LED strip was $14. The 36 inch threaded lamp pipe was $8. Now the acrylic I had left over from another sheet, but that much acrylic was probably only $10. We'll say $20 just to be safe. And the LED driver was $30. So that brings the grand total of materials for me to 98 bucks under $100. I've seen lights that are similar to it, but I don't think it's nice for $1,000. So doubly happy because of that. If you like this one, make sure you're subbed and following along for all my renovation and DIY projects. That's it for this time. And I'll see you guys next time.